So you've decided to ferment your chicken's feed, but you don't know where to start. Well, this is what fermented feed looks like, and I'm gonna show you just how simple and easy it is to get going. Hey y'all, I'm Renee, and today on Tater Town, I'm gonna show you how to ferment your chicken's feed, and if you want a more in-depth look at what fermenting actually does to your chicken's feed, uh, be sure to check out my video on my top 10 reasons to ferment feed and why you may choose not to do so. I'll have a link at the end of this video up in the in video links. And stick around because at the end I've got a question for you that I'm hoping you might have an answer for me. Well as far as fermenting feed, your first question may be, what feed can I ferment? Well you can pretty much use any feed. You can use crumbles, you can use pellets and you can even use whole grains. I personally use the whole grains because they tend to hold up better. Uh, they don't get as mushy as some of the other ones, but the bottom line is all of those types of feed will work. I personally use Scratch and Peck Feeds Organic Grower Mash and I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like their products. And then I also use a grower versus a layer feed since I feed for an entire flock, and since I have a rooster and non-laying hens that don't need the extra calcium that's in the layer feed. I just make sure to have extra calcium supplements uh, like oyster shells, and in my case, I sometimes reuse their egg shells, their own egg shells, as a calcium supplement, and that's available to them at all times so that the laying hens get what they need to make their eggs. And you can check out my video on supplementing your chicken's calcium with their own eggshells. It's pretty cool, and you as a human can even use the eggshells as a supplement. It's pretty awesome and super cheap. You may also be wondering, how much feed should I ferment? Well, typically, an adult chicken will eat about four ounces or about one half cup of non-fermented feed per day. That's non-fermented feed. And this is gonna vary, but that's the average. When you ferment your feed, typical recommendations are one quarter to one half cup per bird per day. I would personally start out with, at the higher end of the scale, with more feed at about a half a cup per bird per day and see how much they eat and then drop it down from there. For me, I ferment one quarter cup per bird per day. Oops, gotta make a mess. And I've got 16 chickens, so that is four cups of feed per day that I ferment. I also always have dry feed available and I use the Bratch and Peck Organic Grower Crumbles. That's available to them at all times because the pecking order is a real thing. And some of your chickens on the lower end may not get all they need by the time the more dominant birds get their fill. You also don't want to ferment more than they can eat in a day since you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and discard any leftovers at the end of the day and give them fresh food the next. You may also be asking yourself, well, how long does it take for the feed to ferment? It varies, but anywhere from one to three days, it's really not that long. I personally let my feed ferment for three days, but it's definitely possible to do it in one day as long as the final pH is 4.6 or lower. This is very important since you want the feed to be acidic. This is the sign that there's enough lactobacillus bacteria present in the food and it's doing its job. It will also have an acidic or sour smell. It shouldn't smell rancid, um, but it's definitely gonna be noticeable. And it, it's, there's a difference between rancid and gross and sometimes it can border on the gross. I personally feel like it smells like hot sauce to me, uh, but my husband and other people really do not agree with me on that. If it's not acidic, you're basically just feeding them wet food, which doesn't have any of the nutritional benefits of fermented feed. It can also lead to mold and mycotoxin growth in the food, which is not good for your birds. Finally, you're gonna want the following items. You're gonna want a jar that's large enough to hold the amount of feed you're fermenting, plus enough water to cover the feed about three inches I just put feed and water in this, and as you can tell, this is the feed level right here. And I've got about two, maybe a little more than two inches of water above it. The feed must be covered with water at all times. As the feed absorbs the water, the grains are gonna expand. So as you check it each day, 
If there's no water on top, you can add more. Um, you also want to be mindful that the feed is expanding. So if the jar isn't big enough, you could have a complete mess on your hands as the feed starts to grow bigger than the container and outside. You can see the level of feed expanding. This is the newest to the oldest, so this is what I'm gonna feed my chickens today. Uh, but you can see the water level gets less as the grain absorbs and expands. The next thing you're gonna need is a lid to cover the jar. You can use a fermentation lid like this. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with the increase in birds that I have, um, I needed to go with a much bigger jar and those don't work anymore. So what I ended up doing was just using the lids that the jars came with. You don't want to tighten them down. You really simply just want to lay it on top. This is because the bacteria that's growing in these jars you want to protect them from oxygen, as much oxygen as you can. You want to protect them from dirt, from bugs getting in. I know sometimes we get fruit flies and they are totally attracted to this. Uh, but you want to make sure that not only are you not letting bugs and dirt in, but these bacteria are generating gases and you need to let those out. The next thing you want is dechlorinated or non-chlorinated water. Uh, this is important. Uh, think about the whole purpose of chlorine um, in your city water or whatever water. It's to kill uh, bacteria and other nasty stuff in the water. And that is not what you want if you're trying to grow bacteria. Depending on your water source, you may want to go ahead and get that charcoal filter to get rid of the chlorine. You also don't want to add anything other than water. No apple cider vinegar, no yeast, no probiotics. I'm not saying you can't add those to the feed, just don't do it while this process is taking place. If you do want to add those things, you can mix that into the feed right before you're going to give it to your chickens. In fact, that's actually one of the things that I love about fermented feed. Because it is wet, I can easily mix in and fairly evenly distribute things like probiotics cayenne powder and cinnamon and it doesn't fall out and go to waste you know if i put it in dry food it's mostly going to end up at the bottom of the feed bucket or on the ground and they're not going to get it lastly you want to put your feed jars in a cool dark area away from the sun um you know it's kind of like the mogwai and gremlins right you gotta keep them out of the sun and be sure to stir the mixture daily I typically mix the jars from the oldest to the newest so that I'm getting some of the bacteria from the oldest jars into the newest jars and that helps to speed along the process. Oh, and if you're anything like me, uh, as much as I try to keep everything organized, you know, stuff happens. So I really like to use, if I can find them here, I really like to use these vinyl chalk marker stickers uh, to label each of the jars with the date that I filled it. I send these things through the dishwasher all the time. Like every day they're going through the dishwasher and these things have held up over a year. The other cool thing about it is I have them positioned so that it acts like a water fill line. So if somebody else has to do this for me, if I'm not here, then they know exactly how, you know, how far after they put the scoops of feed in, how far to fill the water. As for feeding, once my oldest jar is ready, I strain it lightly. It's definitely fine to like give it to them as is, but you really don't want it to be a soup. You want it to be more like oatmeal. So I lightly strain mine. Here's the other reason if you have Americanas or any kind of like really furry chickens, so my Americanas have these really beautiful, cute, puffy cheek and beard feathers. But the food, the wet food, gets stuck on them. And what I found out last year was that the other birds will start to peck the stuck food in their feathers and pull them out. And then they look bare and they don't have those nice, beautiful, puffy cheeks and beards. Well, that's it for the fermenting feed, but here's a question for you. You know, we talked about adding things to the feed, like probiotics, herbs, etc. One of the things I'm really curious about is sourdough discard. If any of you make sourdough bread, 
have you fed your chickens the discard? Um, I've done it twice because I keep reading all these really good things about it. It is the same fermentation process as the feed, and it, so it appears as if it would be safe. But I can't seem to find any documentation on its use and safety in chickens, and I don't really know why I would have expected to see any of that kind of documentation since nobody's making any money from it. But I was hoping to see if there might have, if any of you have done it, and if you could give me your feedback, I would be really happy. Like, how long have you been doing it? How frequently do you feed it to them? Do you give it to them once a week, once a month? What results have you seen? Has anybody gotten sick? How much do they love it? Just curious. But let me know in the comments below, because I really am curious, and uh, I'd love to find another use for my sourdough discard. And if it's healthy for the chickens, I would love to give it to them. And if you want more information, be sure to check out these in video links. And thank you so much again for joining me today on Tater Town. Y'all have a great week. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.